In the last video, we've looked at typing for variable declarations. Now let's look at typing for functions. Let's say I create a function called add, which takes in two numbers, a and b, and it returns a plus b. And uh, let's say I have a variable sum, which adds one and two, and then just gonna console.log off sum. Compile this and uh, execute the JavaScript file. You're going to get three. The most elaborate way to add one and two. Anyway, so we've got this function now and uh, we're passing in two numbers. We don't have to pass in numbers. You can pass in a string here. Right? What happens when you pass in a string? Compiler is going to compile, when you execute it, you're going to get string concatenation because that's what JavaScript does when it's asked to add a string and a number. But let's say you want to prevent people from doing this. Let's say you want to statically type this as a function that adds two numbers and you don't want to accept a string being passed. We can do this by declaring types for these parameters and it works exactly the same way as declaring types for variable declarations. So what you need to do to declare a and b as numbers, just say colon number, and then b colon number, All right? Now notice what happens. Foo gives an error. So the argument of type string is not assignable to the parameter of type number because this is now a number. I can change this to a number and it's gonna work again. But again, like we've discussed earlier, you can leave this as a string. If you run the compiler, the compiler is going to give an error, the same error that we've seen in the editor, but then it does compile, it does result in the code being generated. All right, so I'm going to put this back to a number so that the this is valid TypeScript. Now I've noticed the rendered JavaScript file. Again, erasure of all TypeScript features. There is no declaration of types over here. So the only advantage you're getting is the compile type advantage, which is what we need for TypeScript. The other really wonky thing about functions in JavaScript is the variable argument thing. We've talked about that in the first unit. You can have a function which takes in two arguments, a and b, and you can call that function, let's say add, you can pass in three arguments to this, JavaScript wouldn't mind, or you can pass in one argument to it, JavaScript wouldn't mind. In passing zero arguments to it, JavaScript wouldn't mind. It would still call that function. And if you pass in extra arguments, it would ignore it. If you pass less than what's required, the rest of the arguments would be undefined, right? So this is the typical JavaScript behavior when it comes to functions. But things are a bit different with TypeScript. You notice what happens when I call add with just one number. I get an error. It says expected two arguments, but got one. This would have worked in JavaScript, but it doesn't work in TypeScript. The default behavior of functions in TypeScript is that the number of arguments have to match. Even if you're not adding any type information, let's say I don't do this. I don't specify number as the type that needs to be passed in. So TypeScript is okay with you passing in strings, right? That's fine, but even then, the number of arguments have to match. TypeScript by default requires that the number of arguments match. And if it doesn't, you're gonna get an error, right? So this is the same, even if there are more than the required number of arguments, it again says expected two, but got three. Now, what if you want the number of arguments to be flexible? There is a lot of JavaScript code today, which kind of makes use of that. You have variable arguments that can be passed into a function, and then the function checks if the arguments are passed in, and if not, it does different things, right? So it might have like a default value, it might just ignore it, it might do different logic flows depending on how many arguments are passed in. There's a lot of code out there in JavaScript which does this. And with this kind of strict checking, you're giving up on that flexibility in TypeScript, aren't you? Well, not really. TypeScript has a feature which lets you add variable arguments. Now we have add as a function here. Let's say you want to enhance this function to add either two numbers 
are three numbers. So the third number is optional. If somebody passes it in, it's gonna add that to the result. If it's not passed in, well, it just doesn't consider it, all right? So how do I do that? I do that by specifying the third argument as optional. I do that by following the argument with a question mark. Now what happens when you follow an argument with a question mark is TypeScript considers this argument as optional. If it's passed in, it's gonna take it. But if it's not passed in, it's not gonna complain. All right, so now let's say I do add of one and two. This is valid. Now what if I pass in the third argument? This is still valid. The third argument is this optional argument. But then again, if I pass in the fourth one, it's gonna complain because we had configured the add function for just three arguments, right? So this is how you specify an optional argument. The thing about the optional argument is it has to be at the end. You cannot have an argument be optional followed by an argument that's required. Let's consider this. Let's say I make B as optional and C as required. This wouldn't work because if I pass in one and two, how does a TypeScript compiler know if two is supposed to be the mandatory C or B? It doesn't know. So this will not work. You need to have the optional argument at the very end. So if you can have multiple optional arguments. Let's say I have D as optional as well. So they have to follow, all the optional arguments have to follow the required arguments. Now let's wrap up our discussion of functions with the default value for the optional arguments. Remember I told you that there are a lot of JavaScript uh, functions today written out there which accept optional arguments and what they also do is if an argument isn't specified, if a parameter isn't specified, they have a default value. How, the way they do that is by writing an if condition here and saying if C is undefined, then make C as zero, for example. Well, TypeScript has a shortcut for it. The way you do this is by following the optional argument with the equals and then the value. And I can get rid of the question mark here. So by assigning a value to an argument in a function, a parameter in a function, what I'm doing is I'm telling TypeScript that this is actually not required, it's optional, because if the consumer of this function does not send the value, this is the default value that needs to be used, all right? So now what I can do is I can add C over here. Let me get rid of D. You can do the same thing with D as well. You can have this be uh, optional with the value specified as D as zero. Now what's gonna happen is when I pass two numbers to add, the third argument to the function is optional, but it has the value of zero. So if nobody passes C, it's assumed to be zero and it still adds up A and B. All right, now let's execute this. I'm gonna compile and run and I get three. However, if I pass in the third argument, C is gonna be that value and it's not gonna take zero as the value and when the sum is returned, it's gonna be an addition of all the three values. So I'm gonna compile and run this again. And here you see it's a sum of one, two, and three. All right, so in this tutorial, we looked at a bunch of different things related to functions. We looked at how function parameters, function arguments can be typed. We looked at how TypeScript enforces the number of arguments to match by default. And we looked at how we can override that by using the concept of optional arguments provided by a question mark next to the parameter in the function declaration. Fourth, we looked at how we can specify default values by which you are doing two things. You are making that argument as optional and if somebody does not pass in a value, they're taking up on your optional promise and they're not passing in a value, you are assigning a default value to this. So you know in your function that the value of that optional argument is either gonna be whatever the user passed in or it's gonna be this value, which is the default value. This optional arguments that I mentioned also 
can be typed. Let's say I'm in number. D is a number, but it's optional. This is how it works, all right? So D has a question mark following it, so it's optional. And it also has a type declaration following it, so this is a number, all right? You can do this too. I'm making a D also as I need to get rid of the question mark if I'm specifying a default value because the default value implicitly means that the argument is optional. So D is a number which takes in a value zero. I can say that C is a number which takes in a value zero and so on. This is how you specify four arguments which are numbers, two arguments which are optional but have the value of zero, the default value of zero. Of course, these two are not required like we'll see in the next video. Before we go to the next video, and last thing that I want to show you is that the return type of a function can also be specified. Uh, this is add, takes in a bunch of numbers, but let's say I want to strictly specify that it, it returns a number value. The way to do that is by following the closing parentheses over here with colon number. So what I'm specifying here is that the add function always returns a number. So now we have type safety in both the input arguments to the function as well as the return type. So we know that add, the return of add can be assigned to any number variable. So you have that kind of type safety there. So with this, let's move on to the next video where we're gonna talk about implicit typing.